Hi, this is your favorite Hachi Boon Sisters already, and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a while, but life does get in a way. But I do the best I can once I see something very interesting or I would like to have a discussion on this channel. And so I came across this specific service and I thought, well, we have this currently in over 13 African countries. So it shouldn't be that bad. When I read an article about this as it relates to Liberia, West Africa. Before I move forward, I would like to say, please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. And of course, if you have any suggestions or questions, leave it in the comment section below. So what is it? A few weeks ago, I came across Starlink. Okay, and a lot of you are probably wondering what is Starlink? Starlink is an internet constellation, okay? powered by Starlink services of the United States and is really owned by Aerospace, Elon Musk, hello, a lot of you have heard of Elon Musk, is owned by the aerospace company called SpaceX. I mean, unless you live on a rock, you probably don't know what SpaceX is. A lot of you have probably come across SpaceX because of Elon Musk, okay? So anyway, so what is SpaceX? SpaceX is a manufacturer of aircraft, right? You know, if you heard about going to space, you know, that's what it is. So SpaceX owns Starlink. And just the general idea is the broadband that provides internet, okay? So that's just what it is. So I read that it's coming to Liberia. Not just that, I read several comments anywhere from it's gonna be very expensive to it's gonna provide competition for the current internet providers to other people wondering, well, what is this gonna do for Elon Musk as far as his gain? Okay, so somebody who's like very fascinated by business and also into business, I thought to myself, well, first of all, it's business. so. Baseline wise, if I was Elon Musk, I would actually go to Liberia, start it up at a very minimum fee, and then eventually, if it's reliable and convenient, I would put the price up. That's just the business model, and a lot of people use it all the time, so I don't see the issue. And as far as competition, it provides competition. It's going to be a very competitive thing. So I decided to do further research. I was like, well, Liberia cannot be the only country. I I, I do I, I do state that it's in several African countries, but now I'm doing more research about this to see like, okay, what is happening to other African countries? Then I I start to read further and I realized that January 2023, Nigeria signed on for Starlink. And I'm reading further, and then there's Malawi, there's Benin, there's Mozambique. And then Ghana, like people are catching on to it. So why not Liberia? I mean, if you if you notice, there are two major providers in Liberia, Lone Star and Orange. And to be quite honest, as a user, when I go there, I spend so much on internet because I have a lot more to do. If this service is reliable and I really don't care, even if it's $50 more than I spent, as long as it can get the job done, I'm okay with that. So I decided to take it up a notch to now interview somebody who actually is familiar with the two systems in Liberia and somebody who is also very close to this being actualized in Liberia. So that's when I contacted Zubin Cooper, who will introduce himself on this live and talk to you guys about Starlink, what's happening in Liberia, what are people are saying about it, what does he think about it. And so let's take it over to Mr. Cooper, guys. Hey everyone, this is your favorite Hot Chick with Sisters Body and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you are tuning in for the first time, I want to say thank you and uh, don't forget to leave your comment, share the video, and of course, leave a thumbs up. Starlink, uh, before we move on to Starlink, uh, I would like to know a little bit about yourself. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, the audience are familiar with you, where you're from, any experience, and all that. 
Okay, uh, my name is Zubin Cooper. Uh, mo uh, most people call me Amwati. Um, it's from the Paso language, and it means it's my time or my time. Uh, that's my nickname. And uh, I am a fan of and a love of all things African. I work in the Afri African creative space, um, covering film, music, events. Uh, I'm uh, my company. Uh, holds the franchises for the Miss World Liberia, Miss Africa International Liberia, Mr. Liberia, and Miss Tourism Liberia, one or two other uh, franchises, licenses. Uh, we are also into documentary. We also do documentaries, um, artist management, and marketing, uh, voice recording, and script writing. We fit right within the creative. The here. whole creative space. Mm -hmm. You, you yes. occupy that space. Because, I mean, you, yeah. you cover mostly everything. I mean, you know, I, other yeah, than I I think you said sports, but like you cover everything else. Yeah. You cover okay. everything else. Well, that's basically it. Um, uh, I'm also the Secretary General, newly elected Secretary General of the Liberian Music Musicians Union of Liberia. And we hope to better prepare and get our artists ready to take over the music scene <laughs> on the continent and globally. You guys, all the best, all the best. It's, it's crucial to give like that kind of thing. Um, so we are talking about Starlink. Uh, it, uh, it, it, Starlink, pretty much, like I've said, is uh, is is owned by SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX is a uh, space yeah. manufacturer of spacecraft. So those, you know, just the layman terms of to simplify, is more so with you know space Mars. They started this 2022, and then now they're uh, having satellite for internet broadband, and um, they started in multiple countries in Africa, Nigeria being the first as of 2023. And then they've gone to countries like Mozambique, Malawi, um, and about 13 plus countries now are on board with it. Um, so as I've said previously, I saw uh, the article about Starlink coming to Liberia, and I shared this with you. And of course, you've been around and, and so versed with different things that I thought it would be best to have this conversation with you. What are you? What, what do you know about Starlink? First of all, um, I know like about that is um, by SpaceX. I know that it is generally supposed to give more reliable internet. And uh, at broadband speeds, anywhere you can access it. I know that it's some of the costs might seem prohibited in uh, in certain uh, countries, such as such as Liberia and other African countries. Um, I also know that last year and since the Ukraine conflict, there was uh, a bit of a controversy um, as with regards to the use of Starlink, um, by, uh, that there's some controversy with regards to the use of Starlink by the Ukrainian government and what that and uh, with uh, also SpaceX refusing to let them use it in certain theaters of combat. So on, but generally, yes, um, that's about it. Would, what I do know about it. Okay, so when I so when I read, you know, the article and some of the comments, uh, alluded to, yeah, you know, we want this in Liberia because it will create competition. You know, some people are like, well, you know, it's going to be more expensive. Uh, obviously, we don't know how much it's going to cost, right? But you know, some people are speculating that it's going to be expensive. And uh, others are saying it's going to be for Liberia because there, you know it will be more competition as far as internet coverage. Also, some people are saying that well, because of this news, Lone Star Orange Top better decrease their price. I don't know because I'm not on ground. What are you hearing? What are you saying? Um, I'm hearing a lot of. I've heard. I saw, saw those arguments uh, on online in various social. Media. Forms, media forms that that are dominated or have Liberians. Um, I also 
I've been following um, news and so on. And generally, uh, what we what I have deduced from what I've seen is everybody is looking at it from their perspective mm -hmm. as a user rather than a broader perspective. Right. And I heard the rumors that yes, Lone Star Orange had reduced their prices. What I do know that they have done uh, is that they have introduced new bundles. Okay. Uh, where you get more data for a lesser price for a, a larger, a longer validity period. Okay. Um, however, for a lot of the other enterprise and other type uh, bundles, which some of us use their uh, or their home internet bundle, we haven't seen any market change. Market right. change. Um, so that being said, of course, it'll be great for competition. Um, the thing is, no star and orange do dominate the market, but there are many other internet companies that are operating in Liberia, internet ISPs. That yeah, but what are those though? Because internet. there hasn't been but, visibility for them. Yeah, but most of those are are, are focused on uh, the uh, commercial business markets or uh, upper middle class type niche markets where okay. you might have a company that services mainly NGOs, you have another one that services um, foreign expats, that kind of thing. And okay. then you have uh, like Telesell, which just started um, last year in Liberia, last year, towards the end of last year, um, which is also is a regional brand, uh, mm -hmm. continental brand. Um, they just started. So there has been some competition, but Lone Star and Orange dominates the ordinary user, the man on the street with a cell phone who might not have access to a laptop or a home computer, but who has a smartphone. Okay. Um, they dominate on that because they're directly in their hands on a daily basis. The mm -hmm. others to interface with them, you have to purchase uh, maybe a home kit. That kind okay, of so it's more of a home base. Be right. So those are the people who, I think, uh, Starlink poses a bigger threat to Lone Star, Orange, and other service providers in their home and business services. Mm -hmm. Rather than at the level of the ordinary consumer, unless Starlink, uh, will, unless somebody will plan on Starlink and then re, you know, transmitting it to some devices or something like that. But um, so it poses a threat to them in probably which are the more lucrative markets. Right. More lucrative uh, niche niches in the market. Uh, like businesses, um, ministries. The other thing uh, people have not looked at is also the telco. The which telco. is the government internet okay. service provider who basically manages like our uh, fiber connections, undersea cable connections, which are the main source of internet for mm -hmm. even Orange and Lone Star. Um, because the, they charge fees based upon their usage right. of that cable and their access to it and whatnot. So what happened another uh, provider, Starlink in this case, that just uses direct satellite, you just buy a kit and do it. So how would that affect the telco government revenue generation and all of that? That's one. Um, for me, that's an aspect people need to look at and, and examine it. And it is, uh, the other aspect, and this comes from somebody in the creative sector, um, like we should have done this podcast about an hour ago. Right. But my data from my service provider, for some reason it was off. So I had right. to go and purchase data from another service provider who I normally don't use right <laughs> for us to have this yes so um reliability is a concern but now when you have 
people in a creative sector. For example, I have an online uh, television station, right? It's also on a sat on a sat uh, African satellite uh, service provider, TV broadcaster. If I want to stream online, um, Orange and Lone Star or other service for ISPs in Liberia have not the the bandwidth that they give it, it normally it has it's stopping sometimes it fluctuates at times so then you'd have a case where it affects people like uh, creators who want to upload their music who are dependent on so for example I have a recording studio and I'm and I'm collaborating with somebody in Nigeria or somewhere or trying to collaborate in real time and and not my signal keeps on dropping out or going out loud of it. So if Starlink comes and right now there are some people in Liberia selling Starlink services, but it's based on like really? yeah, based on European and Middle Eastern accounts. So those are I think um the last time I talked to somebody for the year was like three hundred and something dollars, almost the same price as in the US and other places. But then the monthly cost was about like 200 or something dollars. But when you compare it to the price that you might pay to Lone Star or, I mean, to one other local ISPs, if you can afford it and you're into content creation, you're, you, you need, you're into that creative space where you need to be able to have bandwidth for it. Um, the last time I, I, was, I was working on a, a film with a local filmmaker uh, mm -hmm. my company we we, we co-produced it in terms of financing and so we had the completed filming and it was to send us the the, 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 the the completed film so we could just look at it you know review it see right. what it is and it took about four days or five days mm. And the only reason I was just like, yo, where are you? We'll just send somebody over there with a, with a, with a drive and just load it. He's like, oh, but I'm out of town. And so we had to wait for four days, five days. One day he woke up, I think it was on two in the morning, and he was able to send it. And the size of the film is negligible. It's just a couple of gigs. Wow. But but now now when you look at that and you look at how, um, including putting library into the digital economy, all of that we cannot maximize our potential, especially from the creative sector. If we have to, if if our our, 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 our digital connections are unreliable, so mm. then it comes to a cook. Uh, yes, this might be the cheaper option, but will this help my business in the long run? So do I swallow that additional cost? And, and it goes on for everything, like. Uh, you look at it, what does the opportunity to use Starlink, what can it get you? Right. Versus as continuing with what you what you already have, which might be a cheaper option, but because we don't know what prices they might be charging. Just, yeah, but also it's not so not necessarily only cost related. Uh, some people are some people are also deeming it as it's gonna be reliable. That, but no, but that's the main thing I'm saying. If, if, if it's reliable, even at a little bit of a, at a higher cost, if I'm, for example, um, like most of the banks, major banks and stuff use ISPs here, if it's more reliable for them to use that, of course they will opt for it. Right, right. It's, 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 it's about convenience. I mean, even, even in convenience. the US, people pay for convenience. So if it's convenient, like I said, people are willing to pay a little bit more for convenience. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, these are all speculation as far as if it's really going to come to Liberia. Are you really hearing more things, though, that it could really come there? I do know that, I think it was last month, um, the president and uh, his digital team because they're doing a big digital program here like library, library digital training program nationwide program trying to uh, like really push do a massive push for Liberia to enter the digital economy training they started off the first batch of 10,000 
young people, youth are supposed to graduate. And so they started off with that and they're doing a bunch, they're, they're trying to, I know that the LTA is trying to push um, full integration into the global digital economy. They're saying by like 2025, 2026, that the banks, everybody should be locked in. Um, mm -hmm. This hybrid <laughs> thing that we're doing here doesn't, is not best for us. And, but it stands to reason that everybody here will support it from a professional level. Now, when it comes down to it, um, will businesses want to offer, like, when you go to a hotel where they have free Wi-Fi, when the hotel then say, okay, let me just get this because it makes my customers' lives easier. And then others, that kind of stuff, rather than I'll, I'll do this, but maybe this will give me what I need to get an extra half star or stars, three star to four star, four star to five star. Those are all, all the little things, the little what people might see as intangible, but that do make uh, 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 the... I don't f flesh out your portfolio, per okay. se, and can make can make or break you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so you know, some people are skeptical, saying like, "Yeah, well, maybe it just talks. Uh, we're not sure if this will come at all." And um, I mean, it's it's currently operating in, like I said, the twenty-four country. So I don't see why it wouldn't be able to um, get to like to Liberia. The other concern, though, is uh, some comments that I read. What's in it for Elon Musk? Uh, of course, Elon Musk is often referenced because he, you know, he's the owner of SpaceX and is just a is is uh Starlink is owned by SpaceX, right? I personally see it as a business. So I can go into a market and have a baseline price of perhaps maybe hundred dollars just to just to get more people into my network. And then eventually once it's more convenient, it's reliable for them, I can increase my price to two hundred dollars. It's not that they're not gonna pay. If all these factors are wrong, they are gonna pay. So the concern is oh, they're gonna put this price here lower and later they're gonna put it up. What is the problem with that? I don't have a problem with that per se. Once you can afford it, you use it. But the thing about it is, it's not only that. That's why I said people are not looking at the whole picture. Um, there are, when you're doing an enterprise on the scale that he is doing, which is a global enterprise like that, um, the more users you have, no matter what the cost, the easier right. it is for you to do business, one, two, um, if you have untapped potential or untapped storage or service bandwidth, give it to somebody, let them use it. Because right. you, one, maybe one client can offset everybody else. Mm -hmm. One client say, okay, let's meet, we have Arsula Mitali. Mitali says, okay, we're not gonna use Orange, we're gonna use Starlink for all of our operations. Right. That's a global country. That um, company, I call it a country, but because it's almost like his own country, <laughs> is a multinational worth billions of dollars. And if they put all of the operations in like they're on Starlink, they don't have to care about the rest of the rest of, the rest of us. And we have we have China Union, we have Mittal, we have B Mountain, we have, and then you have the the concessions like the Firestone, which is also another multinational that the biggest like. The biggest robot robot plantation in Africa per se. And when you have all of those corporate clients, that's 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 what's in it for you, I think. And and you know, one good thing about corporations, they like to streamline their, their they like to streamline their services. So if nice. Stalin goes global and is in all these countries where you have a Let's say, uh, so let me tell you, see how your services are going. Like, okay, yeah, we got another mind in this place. Let's just do it so you can just build us as one. Right. So those are the kinds of economies, or uh, say economies of scale, I think, that it makes perfect sense for him. And then when it comes down to it, once he, once you're hooked up, 
to the matrix <laughs> and <laughs> that is like twitter okay i'm not talking about all the other stuff on twitter but in your twitter ads will show up and if he has a global service and he goes to disney okay you want to go into every home in africa let's let's do a deal those are the things that people are not paying attention to and not looking at when they're looking at what's in it for him yeah 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 i mean uh airlines are falling into this now you see like united has bought into it and next the next airline in my year it'd be like african airlines have bought into it. you know what i mean so yeah. it becomes a, it is going to kick off uh eventually and i think just like jeff Bezos was able to do amazon and things are convenient you can order today come to your house in a few hours maybe tomorrow um, it doesn't matter how much shipment costs. We are paying for it because it's convenient. And I think this is going to happen to a lot of businesses in Liberia. My, my thing, however, is I really thought it was going to like, uh, it was going to be targeted towards more of the surveillance, like, you know, people who are, you know, who are just buying data. You know what I mean? Because that's that's one issue people are having. You know, the price of data, it, it just, and it, it's not reliable. It might eventually at some point do that because then it will come down to maybe a Lone Star or an Orange or one of these other people will say, okay, it's cheaper for me to do Starlink than to do my own infrastructure. That's What's one. And, and two, the other thing you have to look at I'm looking at that is if, for example, Starlink covers all of Africa, right? Eventually, all 54 countries. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go to Ghana and buy data. Exactly. If I'm on a that's, that's a good point. That's a very good point. I went to, I spent about, last month, I spent about two weeks Ghana, Nigeria. If I'm out of the hotel, for the residents, I have to buy data or I have to be roaming, roaming with or roaming, which is ridiculous. Then that's another thing. If suppose he decides to, he wants to open a phone company. Yeah. And you know, with PLID. him, you know, with them, the, the, the growth is like, you know how it is. It's like, okay. I have Tesla, I have SpaceX, now I'm having these uh, glasses for the blind, now I'm having this. Who knows where it goes next? It could even go to all that. <laughs> no, look at Microsoft where they start Google. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a natural evolution right. of this of his service tree. To right. go to all of these things. But, uh, but the thing about let's say um, that's what I, like I said the telco comes into it as well at that point um, are they going to are the telco and then maybe the LTE how are they going to regulate this are they going to um, look at Starlink and say okay let's negotiate when, they, when the government negotiate what are the fees they're going to charge um, how are they going to make it I mean, according to international uh, regulations, uh, there needs to be an approval from telecommunication. How are they going to make regulation. it work? There needs to be, according to international telecommunication regulators, there needs to be a landing ground, and that has to be approved by com uh, communication regulators in the country in which they're trying to go. So they still obviously will have to go through that medium and see how they can collectively make it work. So ladies and gentlemen, this is... You see why we we'll talk about connectivity being reliable. I've waited for a couple of minutes, as you guys have seen. But without the stability of just the connection, how do we even end this uh, this 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 segment? We can't because there's a struggle now with connecting back and moving forward. So I, perhaps I could say to be continued because not only that we have to continue this conversation, but what's going to happen is months from now, if Starlink finishes Liberia, we are still going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the benefits and or 
the lack of benefits and or the process of even getting it there. This is something that will be to continue. And uh, I'm actually more fascinated by just the interest um, of Starlink, you know, f for the government even looking to have this uh, entity in Liberia instead of things being monopolized. Um, it will help. I mean, this is obviously my opinion. It, it will help in facilitating uh, more competition. Um, and then in, in terms of we will be a reduction in prices uh, when it comes to uh, internet packages because this is very costly. Some of us, we go there and have business to take care of and we are spending like dollars and dollars and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have home internet. And so I I would I would like to hear you from you guys. What are your thoughts? Um is is this speculatory? Is this is 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 it speculations? And or have you heard that it's actually solid? And what are your concerns? Will you will you like something like this? As we were saying about I even said that <laughs> I even said that. And but you know, just let's wrap this up. You know, whatever, whatever I was saying uh, was mostly that we will have to continue this conversation and the, the, the reliable aspect has been proven that it's not reliable, that the current service is not. Um, and so I, I just want you to have closing words. Obviously, when this does happen in Liberia, we will have another segment to talk more about it. So what, what can you say overall? Overall, I say the more competition, the better for the mm -hmm. local market as well as global market. Um, but it, it has the potential to really revolutionize two things. Um, one, how the Liberian creative economy intersects into the global, continental and global creative economy. And two, how uh, digital services and uh, goods like the Amazons, the Alibabas, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of it is very slow here because of logistics, but also because of uh, the ability to communicate effectively via internet in a timely fashion, placing orders, that kind of thing. So okay. it has the potential to really boost our creative sector banking finance but trading is going to be a big a benef beneficiary of it as well yeah so that's what i was saying i mean if it gives more benefit than not why not explore it you know and if it can it can actually uh it, it will be good for competition um i think that when you have more competitors in the market you are talking about price uh reduction and even like product uh even like modification of product to make sure that you know you're 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 supplying the people with the best service as you know as best as you can because now you have a competitor who's going to be reliable so now you have to up yourself you have to up yourself in all your services um so this is the benefit i believe will bring and i look forward to even having it in the country i mean i'm excited for it and Thanks for coming on. Uh, definitely, we'll have you back here again once we have Starlink officially. <laughs> so when 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 it when it's there, you can actually be on here and not go off and on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can complete the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciation to all of those who do watch watch the show from South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, elsewhere in the diaspora, and at home in Liberia. Uh, I just want to say thank you all. Remember, Amwati, our time. Our time. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Okay. I was just saying. So now that you guys have watched this entirety of the interview, leave your comments below. I mean, what do you think? Do you think this is good? Or do you think this would cause burden? Or uh, what are your fears? What are your concerns? I would definitely like to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Talk to you soon.